to achieve the ambitious goals set forth by the Paris Climate Agreement to reduce global warming to 1.5 degrees Celsius above pre-industrial levels by the mid-century, radical measures must be taken to reduce the amount of greenhouse gases in the atmosphere. Utilizing soils as a method for sequestering atmospheric carbon dioxide has been proposed as one such method. My thesis project investigates the soil respiration and microbial community composition in compost amended rangeland soils in the Gunnison Valley. Soil carbon sequestration is the process of removing carbon dioxide from the atmosphere and storing it in the soil as soil organic carbon. Plants uptake atmospheric CO2, process these molecules within their biomass, and when the dead plant material decomposes, that carbon becomes incorporated into the soil. Microbial communities are stimulated by this increased nutrient availability and their activity both releases CO2 back to the atmosphere as a byproduct of their respiration and also stores soil organic carbon deeper within the soil profile, increasing the mean residence time of that carbon. Compost increases both plant productivity and microbial activity, which may support overall carbon sequestration. The mean residence time of soil organic carbon is the amount of time that carbon resides within the soil profile. And it is simply the amount of carbon within the soil, the carbon pool, divided by the amount of carbon leaving the soil, the carbon flux. Different soil microbes process soil organic carbon in different ways. Fungi store carbon within their biomass for longer periods of time than bacteria do. Also, their hyphal networks support the formation of soil aggregates, which are the structures where soil carbon becomes sequestered. Bacterial mineralization of soil nutrients attaches carbon to these aggregates, protecting it from further processing. And then gram-negative bacteria are associated with labile carbon, or carbon that is easily broken down. And gram-positive bacteria are associated with recalcitrant carbon, or carbon that is not easily broken down. And in general, high, higher abundances of soil microbes in the soil supports the sequestration of soil organic carbon. Therefore, my research objectives are to firstly determine the mean residence time of soil organic carbon in compost amended and control rangeland soils. And secondly, to assess changes in microbial community biomass in compost amended soils to classify community composition. To carry out these objectives, I collected data on compost amended rangeland plots. The kind of compost that was used was Gunny Gold, a Class A biosolid produced by the Gunnison County Wastewater Treatment Plant. And it is comprised of municipal sludge and industrial wood products waste. One year prior to data collection, compost was applied at three rangeland sites, with each site having five treatment and five control plots. The Cold Harbor Research Site is owned by the Cold Harbor Institute. This site has been grazed by cows in the past, yet received no grazing or irrigation this summer. The next site, Parker Pastures, is a privately owned ranch that has grazing and general disturbance from a rotation of cows, sheep, horses, and alpacas. Irrigation at this site was implemented for the months of June and July. And the last site, Wiley Lane, is also a privately owned ranch. It has grazing by cows and pigs, and it received minimal irrigation in the months of June and July. The machine pictured here is what was used to measure soil respiration, or the rate of carbon dioxide leaving the soil. Soil cores were also collected from each plot to determine carbon content in the microbial communities present using the phospholipid fatty acid method. These samples were sent to outside laboratories, and I am awaiting results for the carbon content of my samples. Uh, therefore, at this time, I'm unable to calculate mean residence time or provide results as to the carbon sequestration potential of these soils. However, I am able to share results from the soil respiration, moisture, and temperature measurements, as well as the microbial communities. A significant difference was found across the three sites for both respiration and moisture. When sites were analyzed individually, however, Cold Harbor was the only one to have significantly different respiration and moisture values between the control and the treatment soils. And contrary to my expectations, the control soils exhibited higher values for both respiration and moisture than the treatment soils. 
I believe this is due to the high degree of influence that soil moisture has on microbial activity and respiration. To examine that relationship further, all sites and treatments were pooled and soil respiration was found to increase with increasing soil moisture, which is to be expected as soil moisture stimulates microbial activity and the release of CO2 via the respiration. High soil temperatures should also have this effect, yet it does not in this study. Rather, a negative correlation is observed where soil respiration decreases with increasing soil temperature. This finding is best explained by the relationship found between soil temperature and soil moisture, which was also negative, showing that soil moisture is limited at higher temperatures and is thus exerting a stronger influence on soil respiration. For the microbial community composition results, compost treatment showed no effect on the biomass of any of the microbial functional groups. Here we can look at the ratios of fungi to bacteria, gram positive to gram negative bacteria, and overall total biomass found at each site. Again, there was no difference found within the functional groups between composted and control soils. Yet there was a significant difference in the ratio of fungi to bacteria across the three sites, which again highlights the theory that environmental conditions such as soil moisture and temperature more strongly influence microbial community composition and respiration compared to the influence that nutrient availability is having. This is a theory and it will be more clear when I'm able to compare the soil nutrient concentrations at each site with the respiration and fungal to bacterial ratios. At this point, however, the main takeaways are that there is a strong influence of soil moisture on microbial activity and respiration. Also, it's possible that the microbial community may need more time than one year post compost application to show a significant shift in composition and abundance. And lastly, these sites exhibited a high degree of variation in their conditions throughout the growing season and in the results found for their perspective soil properties. So interpretation of these results should be considered with that site variety in mind. I would like to thank Alexa Cooper for building this project, uh, Jenny Reithel at the Rocky Mountain Biological Laboratory for lending me their LICOR, Bill and Kelly Parker of Parker Pastures, and Matthew Ozit, the land manager at Wiley Lane, as well as my committee members, MJ Pickett, the executive director of Gold Harbor Institute, uh, Dr. Jonathan Coop and Dr. Jenny DeMarco, and also Western Colorado University and its MS in Ecology research grant that funded these soil tests. Thank you all for listening, and I would be happy to take any questions.